performing logical operation. Currently we are in section 3 and we are about to check out the 7th video of this section. So in this video, we will make our application functional by adding some logic to it. So currently our application does nothing. It has just its UI built. If you click on calculate, nothing happens, reset, nothing happens. Even if you select the dollars from drop down, then also nothing happens. So one by one, let us add some functionality to these widgets. Let us start with our drop down button. So for that first I will add a variable within my form state which will store the currently selected item from the drop down by the user. Right now let us assign it the value of rupees. So by default rupees will be selected. Let us move to our drop down widget. So here instead of hard coding rupees here let us use our currently selected item by the user. So whenever user select any item this onChanged handler will simply execute this function. So here is the comment for that. So we have to write code here so as to perform some changes. Let us call a function and let us pass new value selected. Now it is the same parameter which we are receiving it here. So as the name suggests this will be the value of the item which is selected by the user. So down below here let us create this function. Call the set state function and then assign the value to the current item selected equal to the new item selected by the user. Perfect. Now all of this code we already saw in the previous video when we discussed about the drop down menu item. And these code as well we already saw in the previous video in this section itself. So nothing new till now. Run the application. From the drop down if you select dollars then it will display dollars here. Working perfectly fine. Now what about these text field. Suppose if I enter here something and want to extract the value out of this text field. So what is the standard protocol in case of flutter. How to extract this value out of this text field. So to do that in flutter we have a special notifier known as text controller. So for each of the text field that are present here we have to create a text controller which will control the text entered by the user. So whenever the user enters some data within these text field the controller associated with the text field will simply notify the listener that hey some changes has been done to the text field by the user. I will create the text controller for all the three text fields and the name of that class is actually text editing controller. Similarly define the text editing controller for other two text field. So here I have ROI controller as well as term controller. Now down below for each of the text field such as first is the principal text field. Let us define the controller property and provide the principal controller instance here. Similarly for other rate of interest let us provide the controller. ROI rate of interest controller. Same applies for term controller as well. So now we have a controller that will help us to extract the values out of these fields. So let us add some functionality when the user click on this calculate button. What should happen? So down below here for the raise button of calculate let us call a function such as first call set state and then call calculate total returns which I will create it shortly down below. And this will return a string value. So here our first task will be to extract the values out of these field by using the controller. Use the controller dot call text property. Now this text property is actually the string. So we cannot simply assign it to our double variable on the left. So what we can do we can simply parse it to double. Perfect. Now similarly let us extract rate of interest and also time in years. Once you are done let us calculate the total amount payable in the end of the term. Use the simple interest formula. And then return a result. That will display a message to the user. 
return this string. Perfect. Launch the application. Let us enter some data to these fields. Click on calculate. Now here nothing happens because we have to set the result to our text. So for that let us write some code. So on the top let us create a string variable which will be currently blank and then assign it. In our raised button use that variable. Perfect. Now use this variable to display the result in our text which is present down below here. So instead of using to do text let us use display result. You can use this dot display result. Perfect. Run the application. Enter the data. So there we go. After 10 years your investment will be this much. Now I guess I missed to display the rupees here. The currency selected. So down below. Just give a space and use interpolation current item selected from the drop down. Fine. So this completes our code. And now in the end when you click on the reset button nothing happens. So let us add some functionality to the reset button as well which is quite simple. Go to the reset button and here you can call set state function. And within this you can call a reset function. And define this reset function down below here. Within this function you can put all the controller text or the text field text to the blank string. Also the display result text to blank string. And even you can set the default drop down item to let's call it currencies of the index of 0. Like this. Run the application. Enter some data. Calculate it and then click on reset. Well everything is now back to the original condition. Even if you select here pounds and click on reset then also it will reset your data. And if you type something here click on reset again it will reset it. Even if you have not calculated something then also it will reset it to normal. Now in the end I have missed out something which I want to rectify it. Now here we have some values that I want to instantiate when the state of this widget is created. For example the default drop down item as rupees. So here instead of rupees you can use underscore currencies of the index of 0 which will point to this item here. But here it is not allowed just because only static members can be initialized here. So for that we have a special function of init state function. And then copy it, paste it here and then make it blank. And also make sure to call the super dot init state. Run the application and yes rupees is by default selected. So we have successfully built our application. Now if you notice even if these fields are blank and if you click on calculate then behind the scene some operation is getting executed. For example here the exception was thrown invalid double value. That is it was not able to parse the invalid string value to the double value here or here like this. So the exception was thrown. So we have to do something for this. So in flutter we have a form widget which we can use and add some validation to our text field. So that if the user has entered something wrong value here or if it is blank and he tried to calculate the simple interest then it should show some validation error. So in the next video let us implement form with some validation.